Hey teachers, so I love using Google Forms. Google Forms are a great way to engage your students remotely and they also can save you a lot of time because they're self-grading. So it's an easy way to collect grades and data for your students. Now Google Forms is one of the things that I get questions about the most from teachers. So in this video, I wanna answer some of my most asked questions. We're gonna look at how to edit Google Forums, how to share them with students, how to view your students' responses, and how to use Google Forms inside of Google Classroom. So let's get started. Now before we dive into some of my favorite Google Forms tips and tricks, I just wanna let you know that this video is really intended for either people who have purchased a Google Form resource that has already been created, which I have links in the description for this video to my uh, Google Form task cards and Google Form escape rooms. So if you've purchased one of those and you're looking how to edit and share it with your students, this video is for you. This video is also for you if you have experience using Google Forms, but you're looking how to step up your Google Forms game a little bit. You're looking for a little more information on how you can edit it and best use it with your students. If you are looking for videos about how to create Google Forms from scratch, we've got those too. I've linked those in the description for this video and you can find videos all about how to create escape rooms in Google Forms and how to create digital task cards in Google Forms. So now that we've covered that, let's go ahead and jump on my computer and I am going to share some of my favorite Google Forms tips and tricks with you today. So right now we are looking at a copy of my digital comparing fractions and decimals task cards. And keep in mind that everything I am about to show you, you can do to an existing Google form, or you can use these tips when you're creating a new Google form. So the first thing I want to show you is the settings icon. And this is a really helpful tool. Basically, you can go through and change any of the settings on your Google Form. So even if you're using an existing Google Form, you can still go through and change these settings. Now, one thing I do recommend is if you want to be able to send feedback to your students afterwards, you are going to need to collect their email addresses. You can only send feedback that way. So just take some time to read through these different options. Know that whenever you purchase any type of digital Google form from me, whether it's task cards or an escape room, I'm automatically going to have it turned on as a quiz. So if you don't want it to be a quiz and you don't want grading to take place, you'll just need to toggle this button off. I'm going to save those settings. Now, when it comes to a quiz, if you have purchased any digital Google Forum from me, I already have everything, whether it's an escape room or task cards set up as a quiz, and I have all of the questions marked as one point. If you want to change the point value of anything, you're just going to click on answer key and you'll see points up here. So you can change the point value of any question or all of the questions and then just click done when you're finished. Now, as we go through this, I want to show you a couple of things that you can change or edit as you're going through the different questions. First, with these task cards, I always upload an image of the task card, but let's say you have a student with a visual impairment and maybe you need these task cards to be bigger. All you're going to do is click on the image and you can drag it and literally make it as big as you need it. So this is a great way to help those visually impaired students. And that's something very easy that you can do. Another thing I want to show you is let's say I have a question set up a certain way. So for example, this one is a multiple choice question, but you would prefer for students to type your type their answers. It's very easy to change the type of question. Just go to this drop down menu and you could select short answer. The only thing is, is when you change the question type, remember, you're also going to have to update your answer key. So I'm also going to need to put in the correct answer here and then click done. So that is how you can change the type of question. 
Now, whenever you purchase task cards from me, you are going to see all of the task cards together, but let's say you want them to appear individually. You only want students to see one at a time. You can click on the question and then click add a section. And what it's going to do is it is going to make it so that students only see one task card at a time, but you're going to have to go through and do that for each one. And if you have multiple choice and you add sections in, you can even set it up. So by clicking this and you can say, go to section based on answer. So if they don't click, so for this one, the correct answer is B. So we have it set to continue to next question. But for all of the other ones, we are going to keep this on. Let's see what section this is. This is section two. So for this one, they can't continue on to the next task card until they have correctly answered the question. So if they click one of the wrong answers, it's just gonna keep coming back to section two, which is this task card right here. Keep in mind that you can only control how it moves to the next task card or next section if it is a multiple choice question. This will not work with any other question type. One last thing I want to show you that you can do if you want to edit anything on my task cards or my Google Forms. Uh, you can see here that I have A, B, C, D listed to correspond with the multiple choice questions that are on the task card. But if you want to change that to the actual answer, so you could change it to A, 0 0.5, B, 0 0.6, all you're going to do is just click on the line and then you can add or remove anything that you want. So these are just a few quick editing tips and tricks for Google Forms. So anytime you want to view students responses for a Google form, you're just going to come up to the top and click on the response tab. Now the number next to the tab tells you how many students have responded to the Google form. So this shows you how many students have actually submitted the form. And remember, one of the reasons why when you buy a Google form from me for task cards or escape rooms that I give you the this version, the editing version is so you can view students responses. If I just send it to you in student view, you're not going to be able to view the responses of your students. So if you click on this tab, I actually already went through and answered all the questions. I answered some right and some wrong intentionally, just so you can kind of see what it looks like, but you have several different Different options for viewing the how your students responded the first is a summary so this is basically going to give you an overview or an average of student responses so you can go through and see what was the average score you can go through and see which questions did students miss the most which is great for reteaching and then you can see the individual scores once again the reason why you may want to update it to include the email address is because then it will allow you uh, to connect the score with the individual students and then i can go through and look at the average score for each individual question we can also go through and look at each of the questions individually by cl clicking the question tab and then last but not least, you can go through and click each individual student and see exactly how they responded to each question. Like I said, I'm the only person that's responded to this, but if you had a whole class, you could click the drop down and just click on the student that you wanted to see and um, just scroll through and see exactly how they did. The cool thing about looking at individual student responses is you can actually add individual feedback so i can enter feedback on here if i want to upload a video that maybe reteaches something i can do that or i can upload a file that maybe reteaches something but then i can give that student individual feedback and it will send that feedback to them the last thing I want to show you is that when you are looking at responses, if you click create spreadsheet right here,
It will actually create a spreadsheet for you with all of the students' scores and responses. So if you wanna look at everything at once this way, or maybe you wanna share this data with a coach, you can also use that tool. So there are several options for sharing this Google form right here inside of the form. And to find those, you're just going to click on the send button in the upper right hand corner. And it's going to give you several options. The first is send with email. And with this, you're just going to type out each of your students email addresses. If you click the next tab, it's going to give you a link so you can copy and paste this link in an email. You can upload it to a website you have. Basically, you can paste this link anywhere and it's going to give you a very long link. So if you want to shorten it, just click the check mark and it will give you something that's a little bit easier to share. And the last option is to embed HTML, which this is going to give you a code that you can embed Probably the time that you would use this most frequently is if you're working inside of an LMS. Um, if you have a website and maybe you wanna embed the form there, you can also do that. There's also some options for sharing through social media, which you're probably not going to use for teaching purposes. But these are the couple of different ways that are provided right here inside of the form that you can share this with students. If you're using Google Classroom, it can also be very helpful to share your forms directly within Classroom. It will save you a little bit of time and it will collect student data that way as well. So to share inside of Google Classroom, there's a couple of different ways that you can do that. First, you can click on Classwork and Create and you can decide what you want it to be, but let's just say I'm creating an assignment and I'm going to name it Comparing Um, you can provide instructions here if you want to, but then all you're going to do is click add and then you're going to click your Google Drive and any forms that you have should already be saved in your Google Drive. Now, since I was working on the comparing fractions and decimals task cards today, it's going to come up straight away. But if you want to search for something in particular, you can just type the name of the resource you're looking for up here and it will appear down here, but then you're just going to double click it it will automatically upload that form and then you can go through and decide how many points it's worth, if it's just going to certain students, when the due date is, and when you're ready, you'll just click assign. And you will see that it just added that assignment right here so students can just click on that and start working straight away. Now, if you don't wanna upload it in the classwork section, you can also click on stream and then say, announce something to your class. And you're gonna go about it the exact same way. You'll just click add Google Drive, and then you'll find that form. So I would just double click this and it would appear that way. So there's two different ways that you can share your forms in Google Classroom. Now, throughout this video, you have seen an example of just one of my digital math task cards inside of Google Forms. I've got all kinds of digital task cards for math, science, social studies. They're all linked in the description for this video. I've also got digital escape rooms in Google Forums that are also linked in the description for this video if you are interested in purchasing any of those. So I hope this information has been helpful to you and that you feel more confident about using Google Forms with your students. Uh, last, I just ask that if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel. It really helps this channel to grow. It also lets you know when I release my latest videos with teaching tips and strategies and resources. So until next time, happy teaching.